Hello everyone, I'm Jay from TechForce and welcome to case studies. So this is our very first case study and we are looking at Maersk ransomware attack. The biggest ransomware attack since the history of internet, right? So um, it was so massive and so um, devastating that the whole of Maersk systems were encrypted. That's 49,000 PCs and 7,000 servers in just seven minutes. Can you imagine, right? So it's not just Maersk um, which, uh, which was impacted in this attack. There was another pharmaceutical company called Merck, TNT Express, and the manufacturer of Durex condoms. I'm sure we know them all, right? So, um, how did this happen in the first place? Um, there's a company in Ukraine uh, called Linkos Group, and they make a software, uh, accounting software, where you, you use the software to file the accounts and do the payroll and all that. Is uh, they have the software is called ME Doc, right? So one of the neighbor companies of Ukraine, sorry, one of the neighbor countries of Ukraine, uh, who don't like Ukraine. I won't mention the name, but just call them um, Sergey and friends. So the Sergey and friends, what they did is they managed to get hold of the um, Linkos Group servers, the servers that send updates and patches to the software called ME Doc. So they managed to get hold of it. They managed to build a backdoor into this server, right? So, on a good day or a bad day. Uh, they launched um, not Petya ransomware through this update server. So any company that is using the accounting system um, would get the, would be impacted by this ransomware. And um, it's not kind of a ransomware where you would pay bitcoins or money and get the dec decryption key. This this was there purely for destruction, right? And it was so uh, devastating that, as I said, in seven minutes, 56,000 devices. I, I met Adam Banks, uh, who is the CIO of um, Maersk. Um, he was, uh, at, the, at, the, at the time, he was a CIO as well. And he was actually in a photo shoot on the day of the incident. At 10 o'clock, he was in the photo shoot. And uh, 25 minutes into the photo shoot, he, he had his two mobiles. He put it aside out of respect for the photographer. So his first phone uh, went off and he ignored it. And second phone went off, he ignored it. And as soon as the second phone stopped um, buzzing and the first phone went off again. And then he knew there was something wrong. And when he picked up the phone, he was delivered the news, right? Um, and <clears throat> So w what is uh, not Petya um, ransomware here? So it, it was a com combination of two tools. Uh, one is the Eternal Blue, which was uh, which would exploit the vulnerability available in Windows, and another one is Mimikaz, what that which would steal the passwords, credentials, hash passwords from um, hashed credentials from the memory, right? Um, so, if you think about patching and you, you're fully patched, Adam said they were fully patched uh, as well. And so, with the help of Eternal Blue, um, the ransomware was spreading so fast on the systems that were not patched. And, uh, and, the, and the second tool is grabbing the credentials and using those credentials to spread on the systems that were patched, right? So you can see how this is going to be. And it was, as I said, it was so fast, by the time you realize you are under attack, you your data center would be gone, period. Adam said 100% um, of the devices that are connected to their network were encrypted. So they're, um, uh, whole primary backup, secondary backups, primary data center, secondary data center. They had 150 domain controllers and all of them were encrypted, right? And um, 
they were reduced to taking the orders from on, on via WhatsApp, uh, via Gmail, uh, you know, personal mobiles and all sorts. They lost everything. Um, and if you if you think about Maersk, they the 25 percent of the food shipment of the world is done by Maersk, right? Um, I'll give you a small example. In one of the one of the ports they operate from, I think it's in New Jersey. They usually on a good day they expect 3,000 trucks coming into this port. And when the incident happened, they couldn't function. They couldn't do any of their uh, shipments. Um, and they can see you can see the um, the trucks piled up for miles and miles and miles. It just horrible, All right? So why it was um, it was in, in seven minutes, um, there is another reason mainly. So the ME doc software here, the accounting package was installed on a physical server, which was supposed to be migrated to cloud, but um, you know, as these things would happen, they pick a good day, right? Um, so an admin, administrator of the server logged into the physical server that uh, where the ME doc is, the day before the attack, he did some inventory and he logged out. So because the NotPetya ransomware was using Mimikas, uh, which would steal the hashed credentials in, from the memory, uh, it stole the credentials and it got the keys to the kingdom, right? And that's why it was so fast. If you get a chance, I mean, there are really some really good articles on, on, on internet especially one on wired.com please go through it's a fascinating story um i'm i'm really surprised netflix hasn't made a mo movie out of it or a documentary out of it it's a really good documentary material um, i hope they will do um everybody needs to know this right so <clears throat> um I, i'll tell you so another story as well they set up their recovery operation center so from the day they know they were impacted, it took them nine days to um, bring everything back online. So the recovery center was set up near, um, in England, uh, I think it's Maidenhead. Um, so when they were trying to recover, they realized they lost 150, all of their domain controllers. But blessing in disguise was they had one domain controller in Ghana that went a couple of hours before the attack that went offline due to a power cut. Can you imagine, right? And that never came back online, which means that domain controller, only one single domain controller that's holding all the accounts, Active Directory accounts, groups, permissions, etc., etc., which they could recover from. But the guy in Ghana, IT guy in Ghana, he doesn't have a visa to fly into UK. So they sent a guy from Heathrow to go to Nigeria and a guy from Ghana flown to Nigeria. They, he came back with the hard disk and then that's how they started the recovery process. It's just a fascinating story, right? So uh, the, in total, um, the attack has costed the business 350 million dollars um, that's a lot of money it's lost revenue and the recovery costs and everything else that costed them 350 million and there is another company pharmaceutical company called Merck that costed them 875 million dollars almost a billion dollars right the expected um, cost of not petty ransomware attack was almost 10 billion that's um billion with a b right that's massive right. so um what are this what are some lessons learned from this um experience as adam shared um at the, the infosec europe board needs to realize the risk these things are real they're out there um cyber security risk and the board the senior management they need to know and they need to lead from the front. Um, before I, I, I go through uh, all the all the lessons, um, the biggest one I uh, that st strike a chord with me and I, I liked it very much was the value of openness and transparency. 
right? Um, as soon as they attack, if they realize they were under attack, and, and, and um, within a few hours, they made a decision to share whatever uh, was happening to, to, the, to the open world, and everybody knew. And by doing that, um, they, they were telling uh, the world that they were under attack, they're doing whatever they need to do to recover and all that. By doing that, they end the trust uh, of from their suppliers, partners, and then vendors, everybody, everybody, um, right? In fact, 95% of their containers um, didn't have a problem going through and, al and also without custom clearance, right? And because custom guys know that why these guys uh, cannot, cannot do the, you know, go through the processes because they, they were dumped, right? So, um, and also they managed to get support from their vendors, um, their, their partners. Um, one of the example Adam gave us was they managed to pull around like some 60 odd Microsoft Azure engineers from their partners. They can't just go and recruit 60 people. So they, they um, borrowed people skills from uh, their partners, which, which, is, which I think is brilliant, right? And also, um, they have another partner where they they routed their traffic from. It's all. Uh, I don't want to go uh, too too much into technical details, but. And the second one is automated detect and response. Um, now they have they they have a mechanism to art automatically detect any anomalous traffic on their network, which um, in the past probably didn't. Backups attached to network. So as I said, their primary data center, secondary data center, primary backup, secondary backups, all were attached to the network and all were gone. 100% of the devices connected to the network, all gone. So that's probably not a good idea. So you need to, you need to find a way to somehow you know, isolate them um, and not connect to the network. Uh, privileged access management, which is absolutely critical. Uh, as I said here, um, the admin logged into the uh, physical server and hence the um, ransomware, they got the keys to the kingdom and it went like a wildfire in seven minutes, it destroyed everything. So the company is now working towards privileged access management, no local admins, no admin permissions unless you go through um, change request and all the um, process, right? So business continuity plan and crisis management plans. Um, uh, they have they have to be wider than asset focused. Um, so that's another key lesson. Uh, business continuity plan and service reassumption re plans or su service resumption plans. Um, you have to have a plan um, where the plan doesn't depend on IT systems being there. In this case, in MERS, they don't have any IT system. They lost everything, right? So they have to be separate and they have to imagine there are no IT systems. Now the said value of openness and transparency. Absolutely critical, you know. Patching is important, but um, patching is n alone is not, uh, uh, doesn't do the trick. Right, so I hope this helps somebody. Um, this is one of the biggest ransomware attacks since the um, birth of internet. I'm hoping to do this. I'm hoping to do this case studies every month. So please do let me know in the comments below what case study you would like next, and I'll try my best to make it happen. And also, please do let me know your feedback, and I'll, I'm, I'm keen to improve on this. Thank you very much.